Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Today we are going to create a control in the content browser that gives us the option to import files using their default settings or by opening an import setting configurator window where we can tell the importer how it should import each file. This video covers the creation and integration of this new control and will work on import settings configurator in the next episode. We can create a control directly on top of the content browser's list view. The control becomes visible when we drag something onto the content browser. We start by adding a border that contains our new control. In order to be able to use drag and drop with this border, we bind the allow drop property so that whenever the list view is allowed to accept dropped files, our new border can also use drop operations. The border should become invisible again when we drag out of it. And obviously we should handle drop event, which is the whole purpose of this control. We'll write two methods in order to handle these events. I'll give the border a distinct background color so that it's easy to see when it's visible. Well, maybe not that distinct. I guess stinky winky color is fine. Before writing the visibility code, I should note that the default allow drop dependency property, which we inherit from user control class, is no longer suitable for our purpose. This is because we only want to allow importing for a specific part of the content browser and not for the entire user control. Therefore, I'm going to add a new dependency property and call it allow import. We can use this property to specify if an instance of content browser is allowed to import files or not. This is useful when we open the content browser to save a file or select a folder, in which case we don't want the user to be able to drop files onto the save file dialog, for example. So this is a boolean dependency property that's false by default. Now we can use it to set the allow drop property for individual controls. And as I mentioned, we can turn it off explicitly in save file dialog. Of course, we have to get rid of errors in Content Browser, which I'll do in a second, but let me enable import for the one in World Editor first. Since dropping files will be handled using our new control, we don't need to handle the drop event from the list view. We might even go without setting the allow drop property here, but I'll leave it for now because we may need it when we want to copy our move asset files and folders using drag and drop in the future. We do want to make the drop border control visible when we drag files onto the list view, so we are going to add an event handler for drag enter event. We can run the editor and drop a file here, and as you can see, nothing happens. Making the drop border visible is simple. We just set its visibility to visible. However, I'll also add a little fade in animation, which will increase the border's opacity from 0 to 1. You can omit this part if you don't want or like animations. We'll hide the drop border when the mouse leaves its area. However, before setting its visibility, we do need to test if the mouse really did leave the border. 
When the mouse is hovering on top of some other control within the border, it will also raise a drag leave event, which we should ignore. If the mouse really left the border, we play a fade out animation. Again, you could also just set the visibility to collapse if you are not using animations. Now the drop border is shown when we drag files onto the content browser and it's hidden when the mouse leaves the border. Except here on this bar, which is not supposed to happen, so I need to fix that. As you can see, allow drop is enabled by default in Content Browser's constructor. We can remove this since we are using the new allow import property. And now the drop border is hidden when the mouse is on this bar. Next, we are going to define two regions within the border where we can drop files. Each region will then handle the dropped files differently. So first I'll split the area into two rows. When we drop files onto a border in the upper half, it will import all files individually using their default import settings per asset type. This is effectively the same functionality that we already have. What's new is what happens when we drop files in the lower half of the border. In that case, a new window will open where we can configure the settings per file. These are all controls that can interact with the user, but as you can see, they are all transparent. In order to give the user visual feedback about what's happening, we'll add a few more controls on top of these. You can feel free to define the look of this control in your taste. I'm going to make it a border with rounded corners and a thick orange border brush. It also has a semi-transparent darker background. It's not hit test visible and therefore it's purely for visualization. Then I'll add some kind of menu within this border that will indicate which option we are going to use for importing, depending on whether we are using the top half or the bottom half of the control. So here is another border with rounded corners and within this we have a stack panel with two more borders and text blocks describing the actions. That's all for visuals. The only thing left to do is to highlight the option that's currently active. Therefore, I'm going to add a few triggers that will set the border background and the text color according to where the mouse is. These are all event triggers for drag enter and drag leave events for file border and config border. It's important to get the names right, otherwise it won't work.
So when the mouse enters files drop border, which is in the upper half of the control, the import individual files menu option will be highlighted. When the mouse leaves that area, it will reset the colors. We repeat this for the bottom half, which is configure import settings. This should be text, obviously. It's not animating correctly yet because I made a typo in one of the names. Now I just have to find the typo. Okay, this should be files text, not file text. Now it's working correctly. Nice. Now that we have two ways of importing assets, we have to update this method so it will handle imports depending on which option we chose in the UI. So if we dropped files in the upper half to import them using default settings, we can keep calling the same function as before. But if we use the lower half, then we are going to open a window where we can configure the import settings. We'll start working on that in the next episode, so I'll leave it empty for now. Additionally, we call the event handler for drag leave, which fades out the drop border control. Now when I run the editor and drop files onto the content browser, nothing happens because I forgot to use the right method for handling drop events. So all we need to do is rename this existing method to undrop border drop. Now we can drop files in the lower half, which does nothing yet, but using the upper half, we can import assets as before. That's all I wanted to do in this video. As I mentioned, we are going to start working on the import settings configurator in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!